This is David Harden from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today I'd like to go through our practice protocol for management of ocular surface disease with use of intense lid treatments to aggressively manage my Bowman gland in cessation. As we have learned more about dry eye, we understand the role of inflammation and obstruction of the meibomian gland in the creation of patient symptoms and findings. There are several relatively new advanced treatments that we use to help us deal with this group of patients. Typically for the patients with mild symptoms, we will first start with the tried and true methods of lid hygiene and artificial tears. Because the majority of dry eye is lipid deficient with excessive evaporation of the tears, management of the lipid portion of the tear film is quite important. Inflammatory dry eye is also helped with topical cyclosporin and is often added after lid hygiene and tears. Topical antibiotics such as azithromycin rubbed into the eyelids at nighttime are often helpful. Shampoo with dilute Nisrol shampoo at a 1 to 10 dilution with sterile contact lens solution in a foaming dispenser to cleanse the lids three times a week can also be helpful. There are a huge number of therapies that have been used for dry eye and meibomian gland dysfunction, yet these are quite difficult to comply with long term, limiting their success. Over the last few years, we have started using a variety of intensive treatments to the meibomian glands, including meibomian gland probing, intense pulse light with expression, and lipoflow meibomian gland expression. These have advanced our ability to manage these patients with extremely difficult evaporative dry eye or those that desire a treatment that is not as dependent upon the home therapy that requires significant effort on their part. We will first describe the use of intense pulse light therapy with meibomian gland probing and expression. We have found that this is quite useful as a starting point for patients with aggressive lid problems, especially when combined with facial rosacea disease. Intense pulse light is often used for management of facial rosacea and works by occluding small telangiectatic vessels that are associated with inflammation. Typically, patients with very fair skin require more energy, and patients with skin types up to type 4 can still be treated without skin depigmentation or burning. There are now settings specifically for dry eye that simplify the settings of the machine. Here we are setting the machine to the dry eye setting for skin type 2 in this patient. A drop of preparacaine is helpful on the surface of the eye, and shields are used to protect the iris and choroid from light absorption during the treatments. A gel is placed over the skin. The surgeon wears protective eyewear, although the light is only damaging to the pigmented structures of the eye if applied in close proximity to the light source. Treatment is performed in the areas of the face that supply blood flow to the lids and along the lower eyelid. Two to three flashes are typically given as close to the lid margin as possible without treating the lashes and while taking care to prevent the patient's lids from moving or allowing the light to directly access the eye. During this phase, the shields typically need to be adjusted and the lids held closed to protect the eye adequately. Two passes across the face and nose and lower lids are given, typically using a total of approximately 30 pulses. The second pass is often more uncomfortable for the patient as the skin tissue is already warm from the first pass. Pretreatment with ibuprofen, naproxen, and or acetaminophen is helpful to the patient for comfort. We then use a warm washcloth to clean the lids and allow the washcloth to remain on the lids so that the patient can rest briefly before the glands are probed and expressed. We then position the patient at the slit lamp where Baskin probes, distributed by Rhine Medical, are used to probe any glands with scarred orifices or glands that are more significantly obstructed. This can be performed either before or after gland expression by squeezing. I typically will probe any glands that I feel are especially plugged before gland expression as it is often easier to see the orifices before expression with the forceps. If during expression, some of the glands are not easily expressible, then I will repeat the probing. I will then use an eyelid compression forceps, also distributed by Rhine Medical, to express the meibomian glands. Rhine also has a Maskin Mibum expressor, which also works well in this situation. Here you can see the eyelid compression forceps, which I designed for Rhine, being used to put firm pressure on the meibomian glands, 
starting with the peripheral portion of the meibomian gland and then working towards the gland orifice. Depending on the amount of pressure required, you can compress a long portion of the lid to cover large areas at once with less pressure or turn it slightly to put more force per unit area on one or two glands if needed. The forceps have relatively smooth tips so that they are less likely to abrade the conjunctival surface. Still, care must be taken to prevent rubbing on the cornea or conjunctiva forcefully. The forceps can be turned various ways to more effectively express the gland at the edges of the lids or near the nose. Often, if you hold firm pressure for several seconds, this allows the glands to be expressed more completely, although some of the glands may express more efficiently with a pumping or sweeping motion with the forceps. You can see here the significant amount of thick mybum that is expressed in these patients. In my experience, after heating the lids with IPL and using mask and probes, the amount of expression is greater than expression without pretreatment with intense pulse light. Even though most experts feel that the lower lid is responsible for much of the lipid in the tear film, the upper lid can easily be expressed with these forceps. The upper lid also contributes to a patient's symptoms, with edema of the lid a common complaint. Even though the IPL doesn't directly treat the upper lid, the heat transfer from the lower lids and the treatment of the skin temporally creates an environment that is conducive to more complete expression than when expression is performed without intense pulse light heating. The combination of therapies has been quite helpful in our practice for managing patients with rosacea-based blepharitis and posterior mybomitis. Another recent option that we use for intensive treatments of the lid is lipoflow treatments. Lipoflow is distributed by Tear Science. This is slightly more comfortable for the patients and requires less hands-on treatment by the physician, especially in patients that have minimal telangiectasia of the glands and obstruction of the glands that is relatively uniform. For those patients with some glands that are more obstructive than others, direct probing with mask and probes or focal expression of some of the glands can still be combined with lipoflow treatments. Hopefully this video demonstration has been helpful to you in learning about the newer intensive heating treatments of the lids to aid in management of patients with significant obstructive meibomian gland disease causing problems with dry eye symptoms and findings. It is clear that we have much to learn about this complex set of diseases that cause significant problems for our patients. It's important to remember that one therapy is often not enough to give the patient significant relief for this chronic problem of the ocular surface. Multiple sessions and multiple different styles of therapy, both in office and at home, are usually needed. This is David Harden from Minneapolis, Minnesota.